Christel Bursema, a PhD candidate at the University of the Free State, South Africa. I'm presenting a roadmap for evidence-based change in nursing homes, a framework synthesis. Evidence shows that several unique challenges exist to knowledge translation and sustainment of evidence-based practices in nursing homes. Just to mention a few is the high staff turnover, top-down flow of communication, time constraints. Additional challenges exist in the context of nursing homes in South Africa. There's limited baseline data to be able to know what to improve and to focus on. There's a lack of standards of care for the elderly in all areas, for instance, wound care, which is my specific focus area, and a lack of monitoring of these standards of care in this highly fragmented long-term care sector. There's definite financial resource constraints. The COVID-19 pandemic emphasized the significant need for effective translation of research evidence into practice at nursing homes. The complexities of change requires application of implementation science theory, theories, models and or frameworks to guide effective translation and embedding of evidence into practice and to enhance the likeliness of its sustainment. It will be unrealistic to expect of nursing home staff to know which theories, models and frameworks to select and how to apply them. Implementation science is still in its infancy in South Africa. It was therefore my aim to develop a roadmap from theories, models and frameworks that have been used in nursing homes in the past for knowledge translation. To simplify some of the complexities of the process of evidence-based change, this roadmap, which presents a process or a path, can be used by the staff of the nursing home themselves or by researchers to guide them through the process of knowledge translation. I used the best fit framework synthesis method as published by Carolyn Booth. The first step of this best fit framework synthesis is the development of a meta framework from existing theories, models and frameworks. It required a systematic search for papers reporting theories, models and frameworks used for knowledge translation in nursing homes from 1995 till the date of the search. We searched on a couple of platforms and electronic databases. We found 63 papers. Three reviewers then systematically and independently screened the titles, abstracts and full text papers for relevance. Papers that only reported on a specific aspect of translation, such as the evidence synthesis part, was excluded. It was then followed by an appraisal with the TCAS tool. Well, we've included the following five frameworks. They were all hybrid frameworks. One could argue that the Paris is a determinant framework, but some authors argue that the IPARIS gives that process element to it. The TAVA model of research use, the Quality Enhancement Research Initiative Framework and the Query Implementation Roadmap, the Promoting Action on Research Implementation in Health Services and the IPARES, the Champions for Skin Integrity Model and the Model for Implementing Guidelines for Person-Centered Care in Nursing Homes. The frameworks were then deconstructed using structural coding as guided by Saldana. And thereafter, was synthesized through iterative cycles of code mapping to identify common and unique elements. There were no general implementation theories identified and we therefore integrated the normalization process theory into the roadmap. We have also reflected upon current trends in implementation science and also on the CIFR framework during the synthesis process. Start by reading this roadmap from the right hand side in a clockwise direction following the arrows. There are four main phases to the roadmap the pre implementation, implementation, evaluation, and sustainment phase. The pre implementation phase is the largest part of the roadmap, and rightfully so. There are quite a number of essential actions that needs to occur during this phase to prepare and to plan. The principles on which the pre-implementation phase rests are building of trusting relationships, 
assessing planning and securing support from management, finances and an advisory group or the expertise, and then also stakeholder engagement. First of all, see that the resident or the elderly and the family's needs and preferences always remain central in the roadmap. Initiate is the first step in the roadmap, and it's all about identification of the problem. Identification of the problem, however, goes hand in hand with tension for change, a subconstruct borrowed from the CIFR framework. Was the problem identified from within? Did the people in the inner setting actually identify this problem? Or was the project initiated from outside? This will make quite a big difference for buy-in as well. A draft intervention should be brought forward. And this requires a search for scientific evidence. It's important to involve your adopters, those whose practices are targeted to change, right from the start and in this process, so that they also learn the skill for searching evidence, appraising the evidence, and then selecting the best evidence. Get to know, which refers to assessment, is the second step. This is a two-way bridge, acknowledging that practice-based knowledge should be regarded equally important. The implementation support practitioner or researcher or the facilitator should get to know the local knowledge. And the adopters, on the other end, should get to know the scientific knowledge. They should be able to identify what the difference between the evidence and the current practice is. And then only can a process of negotiation start to, to mould and to merge the intervention to fit the specific context. An in-depth assessment of the determinants that presents as barriers and facilitators within the context from the adopters' perceptions and behaviours and practices, as well as perceptions of the intervention, should be conducted. We recommend also an assessment, an initial intervention analysis using the core normalization process theory constructs. This analysis can then be repeated to show how perceptions actually influence collective action. We recommend it being repeated after the co-design and then also again in the implementation phase. Co-design with the key stakeholders as the third step in the pre-implementation phase. Choose an area of improvement, rather small than too large. There will be many barriers, so prioritise the barriers and then select strategies to address those specific barriers based on theory. The support of the implementation support practitioner may be necessary for this. This can all be written up as part of the implementation and evaluation protocol. A protocol stipulating exactly who should do what, when, where and why, and also how. The evaluation protocol will also contain the outcomes on which consensus have been reached. A combination of, the, of uh, strategies is recommended, including pull strategies, push strategies, booster strategies and barrier management strategies. This will create that momentum for change. And a multifaceted approach is always better. It's also necessary to refine and to create educational material that is user-friendly. Baseline data should be collected. It could have been collected earlier in the initiate phase, but it might also be necessary to conduct a pilot test of the intervention at this stage and then repeat your intervention analysis with the normalization process theory core constructs, such as the NOMAD questionnaire. Phase consists of three parallel processes. The adoption process that occurs, the facilitation process that assists, and then the cycles of monitoring, assessing, feedback and adaptation to monitor the progress. Evaluation, the third phase in the roadmap. 
This refers to the summative evaluation that occurs at the end of the project. The frameworks did not specify a lot about the process of the evaluation, but did list some outcomes, and the outcomes were categorized as implementation outcomes, organizational outcomes, staff outcomes, resident and family outcomes. Staff outcomes, perhaps a unique contribution for the nursing home context also, focusing on improved knowledge and skills, confidence with the use of the evidence-based practice, and relief of the strain of conscience, knowing that they're providing the best evidence-based care. Framing a culture of innovation, the last phase. Three main actions have been identified that occurs after evaluation. This is the continued use of the evidence-based practice. Remember, it can always become unembedded, so monitoring its fidelity and continuing the support is important. The second action is re-entering the cycle by identifying new areas of improvement. This is preferred if a culture of innovation is busy developing and then also scale up of the intervention that was successful. The roadmap provides a process and overview of the common elements to be considered for translating evidence into practice at nursing homes and to initiate the cycles for creating a culture of innovation. The roadmap can be used by the nursing home management or staff, researchers and implementation support practitioners to plan for or to gain insight into existing change processes in nursing homes. Thank you so much. My email is provided in the slide below. You're more than welcome to contact me.